Welcome to Public House, intimate conversations with people making a difference in the Hudson Valley. And now, from Paula's Public House in Poughkeepsie, New York, here's Paula Young. Hi, I'm Paula Young. Welcome to this episode of Public House. Once again, we are at Paula's Runway Cafe. The gentleman that's matching me directly to my right <laughs> is Hudson Valley legendary musician, Vito Petrozzi. Hey! Welcome, Vito. Thank hey. you so much. Thanks, Good to see Paula. you. Good to now, see you. my goodness, where do I start? Vito is one of the most prolific, talented guitarists, singer-songwriters, but beyond that, who the heck is Vito Petrosito? <laughs> who is the man behind the guitar? Well, that's a great question. That's yes. A real, so, and it's pretty big. It's that's a big what question. we're going to find out today. Tell oh, wow. me who you are, where you come from, why the guitar? Well, okay, so that's, let's see. Uh, where I came from, uh, my family uh, basically, when I was born, was already in Poughkeepsie, and then they had moved to Hyde Park. So I'm, I'm originally a Hyde Parker. And uh, let's see, my dad was a professional musician. What did playing, he play? He played drums, okay. was his instrument, and he also sang. And uh, I think after World War II, he had some really incredible opportunities uh, through his drum instructor in Manhattan, uh, the famous Henry Adler. Okay. And, uh, but my dad fell in love with my mom. So okay. uh, it kind of, you know, he, he chose my mom over the, the uh, whatever terrific opportunities there were there. So he, anyway, we're in Hyde Park. I'm watching my dad play. My brother, a fantastic musician as well. Uh, just what music in the play? family. He's a trumpet player, but okay. he also plays guitar. And, okay. and uh, you know, um, so, uh, and then there's music all over the family, whether it be uncles, cousins, and stuff like that. There's music everywhere in the family. And uh, so, to, you know, growing up, I mean, there was my dad practicing all the time and going to gig. He gigged, he did, he did four or five nights a week right here in the Hudson Valley. So, Dad falls in love with your mom, kind of leaves the drums behind, continues to play music because it's in his soul. Yep. He has these beautiful children. Who gave you a guitar? So what happened there was my dad was a drummer. I figured naturally that I'd be little Ricky. He was like Ricky Ricardo, I'm little yes. Ricky. I'm thinking I'm gonna be a drummer. Okay. So I tried to get my dad to teach me drums and uh, something with the four limbs thing didn't compute with my brain. I, I couldn't operate. It was like walking and chewing gum at the same time. So four limbs going. I'm like, are you kidding me? It was like a three ring circus. And I said, I, I think I'd be better with something like two limbs, you know? So guitar came to mind. And plus, if we were at a, if we were ever to have like a family band, the Petrocitos, like we, they were all drummers and trumpet players. Okay. Like we could have a marching bear, uh, you know, a drum corps. Right, or something. right, right, right. So somebody's got to play something. Would have been different. good during the Civil War. Exactly. <laughs> right. You know. So uh, yeah. So the guitar came in at about 12 years old. Um, I kind of stole one from a cousin and started playing, tinkering around on it, and. Um, and then it was, uh, you know, about 12, yeah, the end of 12, I, I had this original tune. My first original tune was... Let me hear it. That was my first original tune. So I play it for the family at a family reunion. And they all start laughing. Okay. They all start laughing at me. Well, because that's it's a way so to adorable. Build the well, it was right? adorable. It was cute. Oh my God, this is little Vito playing this guitar. They're laughing because it's cute. Okay. I'm hearing the laughing. It's not think, cute. You think I'm, I'm terrible, like, oh. right? So, right. so away went the guitar for a couple of few years. Okay. At that point, I raced motorcycles, uh, motocross. I started to race. You're kidding? Yeah. So and that how, was. How old are you? I was 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. 15. I break my leg. <sighs> And in about the and then my brother bought me my first real guitar it was an Ibanez uh, uh, Stratocaster copy uh, from over Route Nine was the music shop or the music store on Route Nine and uh, he brought me home this guitar and I was reluctant I'm like I'll be back on the bike before you know it okay. but in the six week of healing uh, I looked kept on looking at it kept on looking at it in the corner looked at looking at it. finally picked it up and that's like 1977. And I haven't put it down since for longer than wow. a week, you know. So, so that's 1972. Pretty... I picked up a guitar. My first song was "It's Too Late, Baby." Oh yeah. I was depressed even then. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and then I did it for a while. My fingers hurt. I was like, okay, that's that. But you did it, and you've been doing it. So yeah. now, okay, you're growing up. You play guitar. You go to school. You play guitar. When does it become? 
a profession? Uh, let's see. So as soon as I started playing, about 15 years old, I was in Roosevelt High School, and my brother invited me to play with his band. Okay. Uh, which those guys were playing, and they're they're about 10, 15 years older. What was than the me. name of that band? That was the Moonshiners. Mm. Moonshine Serenaders. There was a few versions of it, but the Moonshiners and. Uh, and what happened, they're playing like one or two nights a week. Uh, so all of a sudden I start playing in that band um, along with who would eventually become my instructor, this fella, Jeff Belding, who was my mentor and my, the guy that kind of showed me the ropes on guitar, as well as my brother. My brother really uh, showed me entertainment, how to entertain, and my father taught us both how right. to entertain. Um, so I start playing, so that's my out in the club band Okay. So, you know, uh, in high school, you know, you're coming in Monday morning, I'm kind of tired and whatever, I got to get to school or whatever. And then I had my high school rock bands, which was totally different. Th those guys, you know, we took, we took six months to get ready for one gig. Right, right, right. Whereas I've got another life already developed here, playing one or two nights a week, right, you know, right. or whatever. Uh, they squeezed me. Uh, and then I remember the first gig, I was 14 and change. And my dad, you know, yelled at me and said, you know, you're too young. You're, you're not going to go play this bar tonight. So the guys are loading the van, my brother and all his friends, and I'm sitting there holding my head in my hands. And he says, what's the matter with you? Load some gear, you know. <laughs> I said, dad, dad just told me, uh, you know, that I'm too young to play it. He says, go in and ask dad how old he was when he first played his first bar. Right. So I go in and around the kitchen table, and my dad's sitting there. I'm like, hey, dad, you know. And he says, what? You know, he kind of knew it was... Well, how old were you when you played your first one? Thirteen, for crying out loud. And he poured us two shots. <laughs> <laughs> and we did the shots. He said, go belt them. Let's see, what would he have really, he would have said, go let him have it. Or yeah, belt it, belt go it. knock you know, him go, out go or something. Yeah. yeah, my dad and your dad probably would have uh, come from around the same time yeah. in the world. Okay, so now here we are. You do this for a living. Yeah. And your family doesn't just eat pizza, which is that no, myth, right? No. That if you're a guitar player, yeah. your family eats a lot of pizza. You actually yeah. make a living doing this. I have a home. I have two beautiful daughters, uh, yes, you 12 do. year old twins. And uh, uh, I think we're, and, uh, and their mother is a wonderful person, my former wife. Uh, we, and we have this unit, family unit, and we're doing really good. We're keeping our, uh, you know, our heads above water. And, and you've brought home. music to the Hudson Valley. I mean, I know that you play around, uh -huh. and, <laughs> and you play with lots and lots of bands. Do you also teach? I do teach. I've been teaching for years. Uh, my, first, uh, uh, my first lesson that I taught was like in 1986. And musicians started going on my tax forms in 1984. So wow. Now, can I buy a Vito Petrosito recordings? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, see, I, I didn't know any of that. Yeah, uh, see, that's the, the multiple lives that I lead. You know, like here in the Hudson Valley, sometimes, you know, there are rooms that are conducive or welcoming to original music, but then there are rooms that aren't. You know, right. like if, you, if you're not playing Brown Eyed Girl and Mustang Sally for some of the people here, you're done. You don't work. So you got to do that. And then, then you find the audiences that want to hear, we want to hear you. And it's so funny because I run into that a lot at events that I play. There was an event last summer. I was playing a backyard party. And this table was in front of me. And they're hearing me all day. And I'm trying to play the greatest hits, whatever. Uh, just a single solo acoustic dude in the corner making right, the right, thing right. happen. And this, uh, this table at the end of the night said, listen, you know, all the songs you're playing, Grateful Dead and all that, you know, it's all great, but what do you do? Right. You know, let, me, let me hear something from you. Ah, let me hear something from you. <laughs> now, I have a restaurant where you've played and have lit the room on fire, and I always am in awe. So, Vito, let me hear something from you. <laughs> all right. Segue. Well, I'll tell you what, I got something hot off the I'm press. I'm glad and I, you do. I just wrote this song, and this is one of my new songs. I'm all hoping right. that I can deliver it for you, Bob. Let's hear it. It's called Deeper Love. Oh, you know, so. Deeper Love, baby. Well, I can go out drinking. That won't help me much And I've tried to do some thinking I'm feeling way out of touch Wish I could see the future I'm loving every step of our past Well, I She has 
that life before me well, How she fits it all in a day Whatever this thing is between us Well, please don't let it slip away She's 30 miles away To me it's like a million and four well, I, I want to dig a little deeper love, deeper love. I want to dig a little deeper love. No. I'm just looking for. seeking approval I smothered her a little bit and I swear there's something wrong with me I hope my ride ain't over yet I'm at the mercy of this aching heart driving in midnight rain well I Looking for a deeper love, deeper love. Well, I'm just looking for a deeper love, deeper love. Well, I'm just looking for a deeper love with you, with you. like that <laughs> well that was beautiful thank and you and also extremely touching thank you i understand the looking for All a deeper right. love yeah ah, that i think is the first original of yours i've ever heard oh wow yeah so there's a lot of those out there you know i have uh you know i have this website i am vito.com i am i am vito.com and a kind of a, that kind of will, will show you the many vetoes, I think. Like if you if you spend some time there, you can kind of sift through the sift through the you know it's a menagerie of sorts. You well, know, I crazy. think it's I think to become a musician and to be a musician, I think like you said, it, it's popularity, it's culture, it's flavor of the week. But you have a song to sing of your own, and it's yeah. quite beautiful. Yeah, I mean when you sing uh, so many people's sentiments over the years, you know, like so you you're singing Van Morrison lines, you're singing Bob Dylan lines, you're singing all these people's thoughts and their their feelings, and then you get to a certain point, it's like, wait a minute, I, I have a voice. I have a voice. I have feelings. Yeah, I've so got wanna... a song, I've got a song. So uh, I think at this point in my life, like I feel like I haven't even arrived yet. You know what? Neither have I, and we should live forever. Vito Pachito, <laughs> not Paul. only do I personally love you and cherish you <laughs> and admire you, but I am Vito.com. Yeah. And we should learn more. And thank you for everything that you do. Thank you. For bringing music, because you know it's the one thing that unites us in the world. Yeah. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you. This was Public House. Please tune in again. Thank you. Good job. That's great. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. Hi, I'm Paula Young, and I'm the proprietor here of Paula's Public House. Do join me for good food, good cheer, and good fellowship. We are here, we have fun, and we'd love to have you be a part of it. Come on down.